Last thing I'd like to talk to you about today is Z-Hub, a new concurrent data structure coming to Zio. But before diving into Z-Hub, I want to talk a little bit about concurrent data structures in Zio in general. Uh, Zio is a library that is a framework for you to solve your hardest concurrency problems. It's not just a functional effect system. And so Zio ships batteries included with all the concurrent data structures you need to do that. Very basic things like ref and promise, but also uh, more complex things like uh, a concurrent queue that you need to build more complex solutions. And I think uh, the queue in Zio in particular is probably the most underappreciated data structure in Zio 1.0. It's incredibly high performance. It supports back pressure on both producers and consumers. And for having such a high performance, it also has a very flexible API where you can create different kinds of queues. You can create bounded, unbounded, sliding, dropping queues. You can create queues that transform their inputs or outputs that filter them. Um, so incredible amount of flexibility combined with a very performant API. And I think sometimes as a user, it's easy to say that, well, a queue is a queue. Zio has a queue and it's great. Cats Effect 3, they have their own queue. That's great. A queue is a queue. Um, but th that's actually not really the case. So if we think about what a naive solution to a queue would look like, we could just put a immutable Scala queue inside an atomic reference. And in fact, that's not that naive. That, that is the queue implementation in Cats Effect 3. And this is what I would call a concurrent data structure, kind of. It's concurrent in the sense that you can use it in a concurrent environment where multiple fibers are accessing it and it'll give you the right results at the end of the day. But it does that by essentially not being concurrent of this atomic reference is gonna kick anyone out when anyone else is making a concurrent right to this data structure. And when you're working with a queue, essentially every interaction is a right because every interaction is either updating state by adding a new value or updating state by removing a value. So if you've got two, let's just say for simple case, two producers and two consumers, and this producer is trying to write a value at the same time as another producer is trying to write and two consumers are trying to read, all these guys are going to have to retry well this guy completes and then they're going to go and again if they're going at the same time they're going to have to retry well this guy completes and this is just kind of going to go around so it gets you the right result but it's kind of lock it's using an atomic as a lock and locking on the entire data structure instead of actually implementing a concurrent data structure that allows multiple fibers to interact with the data structure cooperatively at the same time in contrast, the uh, Q in Zio is backed by a ring buffer, um, which is a highly optimized concurrent data structure where there is one array that backs the ring buffer that essentially is used to represent a circular buffer. And each consumer and producer can write to the appropriate element of the array. And the ring buffer maintains the logic to make sure that no one's writing over each other, that each uh, producer and consumer is reading and writing from the right place. So with the ring buffer, this guy can be reading this value. If someone else is trying to read a value at the same time, they're not going to have to retry the whole thing. They're just going to go on to the next index of the array and grab the value from there. And some of the producers at the same time can be writing to other indices of the array. And this makes a big difference for performance. So here's the performance of Zio's queue versus the queue in Cats Effect 3 slash FS2. It's now the, the, the same queue in, in Cats Effect 3. And you can see the performance is dramatically higher with Zio's queue, which makes sense when we look at the implementations above. So 
queues are great, but they don't solve all the problems that we might deal with. A queue you can think of as the optimal solution for distributing work. So if you've got a set of producers who are producing values and you want to split that work up somehow between different consumers, you have each of those consumers take values from the queue and each of the consumers will get one of those values and you'll have a guarantee that A is taken by exactly one consumer, B will be taken by exactly one consumer and so on. And that, that's fantastic for that class of problems and there are a lot of things that can fit into that class of problems. But there's another set of problems we deal with that are more problems of broadcasting where we're producing a set of values and we want each of those values to be seen by each consumer. So you could think of this as like a publish subscribe pattern. Uh, you could uh, think about it as just within a streaming application, a broadcast operator. You could also think about it as a potentially a higher level principle for architecting your application, where you could think about uh, structure your entire application more of a disruptor style where maybe this is a stream of financial transactions. And this is handling the business logic of those transactions. This is persisting those transactions to a database. And this is logging each of those transactions. And really the motivation for this work was that uh, we had a Zio user who said, hey, I, I love Zio, I love Zio Stream. I wanna just rip out my existing solution, use this hundred percent. But the reason I can't is because there's this topic like structure that you don't have. And we never want to be, we never want our users to be in the situation where they have to use another library like that because we don't have a solution for something that's within our domain. So we went back and we thought about, okay, how do we do this and how do we do this in the right way? And so again, just like with the queue, there, there's kind of a naive solution for how you would do this. And that's just use a bunch of queues. So you could imagine that you maintain a separate queue for each consumer and what it means to publish to this structure is just to go one at a time to each of the queues and offer a value to it. And then each consumer can take values from the queue at its own pace. And again, the solution actually isn't that naive because this is the implementation of the topic data structure in FS2. Um, but when we think about it, there's a lot of inefficiency there. If we're broadcasting, let's say, 100,000 different consumers, we're creating 100,000 queues for that. That's incredibly wasteful. There's a ton of overhead in doing that. And ultimately, there's only one value there, right? When we publish that like ABC, there's only one A, there's only one B, there's only one C. Why do we need 100,000 different queues to do that, that each have their own overhead of, as we saw, the queue is itself this thing wrapped in atomic reference, and now we have to wrap this whole thing in another atomic reference. There's got to be a better way to do this. And there is if we take inspiration from the ring buffer. Again. So we saw that we've had this highly optimized ring buffer implementation, and we can actually modify the logic of that and build on that to support this broadcasting case. And so what we're gonna do is with the ring buffer, when we had two consumers, the first consumer would just grab the A value and the next consumer would go ahead and grab the B value. Instead, what we do is along with each value, we keep track of how many consumers still need to read that value. And then when the first consumer reads it, if there's still other consumers who have to read it, they just go on and they just keep reading the values. And when the last consumer reads it, they clear that value. And then that makes room for producers to go ahead and fill that spot again. And so in this way, we only need one array to support this entire data structure that used to require 100,000 different queues. And as you would expect, this makes a dramatic difference on performance. So here's the performance on throughput of both sequentially publishing and taking items as well as doing so in parallel with the hub versus a implementation of a hub like structure backed by ZOQ using that naive implementation we discussed above, then the actual FS2 topic 
and Cats Effect 3.0 Q using that again to back a hub-like structure. And so you see this huge performance speed up of using a hub for this versus using a queue, which again, makes sense if we look at the implementation above and say, yeah, if we were creating these thousands of queues above and we don't have to, that's gonna be a lot faster. And that's what we see in the results. So in addition to the performance, the other thing that I'm excited about with the hub is it's got a really nice API that I think is gonna be really familiar to anyone who's used Zio's queue and plays very nicely with everything else in Zio. So a hub is defined in terms of two fundamental operations. Publish, publishes a value to the hub and returns a Boolean indicating whether that value was successfully published. And subscribe gives you a Z managed effect where the acquisition of the managed is going to subscribe you to start receiving new values from the hub. The release action of the manage is going to take care of the logic of making sure you unsubscribe when we're done with this. And within the context of that managed, we get access to a DQ, which is just a queue. It's the exact same queue you already know from Zio 1.0 that you can only DQ values from. And all the other operators that define that are defined on queue, other than offer and take, which are replaced with publish and subscribe, also exist on hubs. So you can shut them down, you can check whether they're shut down, you can do all the things that you're used to doing with queues. And you can also create all the same varieties of hubs as you can queues. So you can create bounded hubs that will back pressure when there's not capacity in the hub. You can create dropping hubs that will just ignore new inputs until there's space in the hub. You can create sliding hubs. These end up being particularly useful because essentially this says, you're just gonna push out the oldest value. So you're always gonna have the most recent values in the hub for new consumers to take. And then you can even create unbounded hubs uh, for some situations where you want that. In addition to this, hubs play extremely well with streams, uh, with the, the topic for our next discussion. So one of the really nice operators on hubs that supports this is this to queue operator which lets us view any hub as a queue that we can only add values to. And so this queue, adding a value to it, will just publish it to that hub. And again, the shutdown, all those operations are implemented in the same way. And so this lets us use a hub anywhere that we were previously using a queue that we were only writing to. So you can imagine that if you had a streaming application where today you're sending all the values from the stream to the queue and you're having one consumer do something with them, you could replace that queue with a hub using this to queue operator. And then you could have multiple fibers taking those values from the hub and doing different things with them. So you could essentially with one line of code change change the entire topology of your application from a one-to-one to, one to a one-to-n. And of course, you actually, if you're working with Zio Streams Opera itself, you're not even going to have to call this to queue method because we're going to do it for you because every method that makes sense that works with a queue now has going to have a hub variant. So you're just going to be able to call into hub and send the values from a stream to a hub or you create a stream from a subscription to a hub. And this stream, as soon as you start pulling from this, it's gonna open the subscription. And as soon as you're done with this stream, it's gonna close that subscription to the hub. So they integrate together really, really nicely. In addition to this, all of the broadcast family of operators on Zio Stream are now re-implemented in terms of Zhub. So that performance benefit we saw above, you're gonna get whenever you use any of those operators without you having to do anything. Uh, so I'm really excited to bring this to you. I hope that you enjoy using it as much as I've enjoyed working on it. Thank you very much.